And I think it would be hard for any young man to kind of discern that at that age because your hormones are this high, then you have the culture in itself. You know, what's your body count? What's your body count? What's your body? You know, like that's, it'd be hard to have the discipline to stay away from that at that age. And into, I think someone said it, you know, if you don't do something with those emotions and those feelings and you suppress it, it, it doesn't go away. Look what happened to Tiger Woods, you know? It, when he got to that fame, we found out later, he had a whole laundry list of feelings he had to get out, right? Which, oh, he got the even, feelings out. Even that feeling, even that feeling, <laughs> let me share more, even that feeling of being used for sex, you know, affected me in my marriage, oh. right? Because when it was time to be intimate with my wife, I looked at her like, oh, not again. Oh, gosh. Wow, that's real, right? y'all. Sex became a burden. Mm -hmm. Chore for you. Right? It's like, oh, this again. I've been pumping my waist for as long as I, could, I, can, I can remember. Oh, yeah. Right? So it's... That it's, is fascinating. Yeah, it's true. It's, uh, I mean, like, what... Um, what, huh. and what yeah, what, but what's interesting about what you're saying is most women, I think you were saying it earlier, they think that you would want this because you're a guy. Why would you ever turn it down? Yeah. Right. But to your point, you're like, yo, I've been, I've been out here in these streets <laughs> already. I'm, uh, you I've know? been slaying. <laughs> oh, Kadar wants to say something. <laughs> I was going to add to that because um, I think it's almost expected, you know, that, that we show up um, at any moment in our lives as men uh, sexually. Um, for me, like when, when I uh, first entered college, um, you know, the expectation was, well, when you go off to college, it's, it's party time, it's wild time. It was, it was never a conversation about, you know, your studies or things like that. It was expected that, you know, you're going to sleep with a lot of women um, or, or women would, you know, put, uh, throw themselves at you and things like that. Um, I, I purposely stayed off campus because of the stories I heard, because of the expectation. Um, maybe a, a part of me ran from the expectation. But I, I stayed off campus and um, avoided, you know, the majority of, of, uh, of things that, you know, a young man is supposed to encounter, you know, during college. Um, call it discernment, call it uh, a, a notion or whatever, but I, I just simply avoided the majority of things that came with college life. Um, I think for, for us in general as men, that, that expectation is what, you know, either drives us to, to feed into it or it, it can repel us in, in a sense and it, it, and it can affect us later on down the road. Um, just in general, like, like uh, for instance, when it came to me um, um, stepping away from, from my, my abstinence self, um, it was difficult to, to re-engage sexually because I'd repressed, you know, for so long, um, you know, no sex, no sex, no sex. Not that I looked at it as a negative, but in repressing, you know, that that energy, um, I, I kind of had to to restart the, the the motor or the mojo, if you will, when it came to uh, to, to you know getting back into uh, um, uh, sex. But overall, I, I think for, for me in general, just the expectation, I think that ha it has a uh, has it can have a negative or positive you know impact depending on the type of man we are in that in that moment. I'm gonna name it right now. Name it. It's going to be called. The ketosis syndrome. Uh, <laughs> it's true. Let's call it the ketosis syndrome. It's true, right? Because okay. and, and and there is an arrogance on the part of our queens, uh, on, on the part of our queens as well, right? Mm. Because for you, the effect of rejection leads mm. to insult, denigration, demeaning, and everything else. I do. You, you're banging. You're beautiful. Mm. You know, like yes. If I was simply less than myself. I would be your beast right now. I would be, <laughs> I would be your slave. I would be subject to you. Mm -hmm. I would give you my energy. Mm -hmm. But no, I don't want you. <laughs> no, I don't right? want you. I don't have any sovereignty in that decision making. They, don't, they do not accord me the power to say no mm -hmm. in that situation. So I don't know, maybe one day we can do a second show on this. Well, you do have your sovereignties, whether or not you exercise it. And there's just a belief, there's a learned helplessness that makes you think that you have to do something. So once we are able to tease that apart, then you can operate in I, your I think what he's, what he's trying to say, at least my interpretation is, 
you know, cause and effect. There's, there's a cause to exercising that level of discipline. Like I remember uh, having a conversation and then the person came off to me and said, you're, you're such like a white guy, right? Because it, because it was different from, the, the, the certain levels of discipline were different from the <laughs> brothers that they're used to being around. Yeah. That, you, you know what I mean? So what, what I think you're trying to say, there's a certain reaction that comes with that, yeah. that to our own sisters in the community, not saying all. They call uh, you homosexual. They, they, could call it di- they, could call it, they could call it different things. At the most extreme, they think you are oh, homosexual. Yeah. Or, you could, or what's wrong with them. you don't want to sleep I with do them. not want to sleep It doesn't even have to be all that. It just be like the certain behaviors, the nuances that they're used to. Like, why, like I remember this years ago, this happened. I was, at a, I was at a club, which was supposed to be a networking event. We turned into a club. I met this young lady and, you know, started dancing. And she's like, why haven't you grabbed my ass yet? I'm like, wow. Well, <laughs> but if you did without consent, you could be having another conversation but, but at a police station. But, but right? I'm just saying this is and then in, in, in today's world, that would be referred to as BDE. You know, you, you didn't have the confidence or you weren't confident, so you didn't do that. But then it's like at the same time, if I did it, I, you know, me too and all this. So anyway, um, even in those moments, like I can remember, you know, dating a, a young woman and um, it was expected from her that I, you know, tried to, to, to put myself onto her within the first week. And, and, you know, to Rocco's point, when I didn't, the first thing that came out of my mouth was, damn, are, are you gay or something? Like, what, what's going on? And I'm like, well, I'm, I'm trying to get to know you. You know, that was my response, of course. But um, it, it's, it's, I don't know in, in, if it's, you know, today's society or whatever, but uh, something is feeding that expectation that, um, you know, we're supposed to be overly aggressive, overly, you know, stimulated and, and just ready to go at all moments. Um, there's, there's two things, and I don't know whether, if, if I've heard enough, there's two things. Um, I think Kadar spoke about as men kind of just showing up, but if we're, not, if we're under a lot of stress and depressed, we can show up and nothing happens. Right. <laughs> so when we feel that we are the black man, we should live up to this stereotype and we show up and nothing happens, that adds further to the shame because we, we can't, as one guy said to me, Delroy, I couldn't even get in an erection. Um, the, the other thing that I will say in terms of, in the privacy of the counseling room, I guess you have the same thing in Canada, um, friends with benefits. And I, I heard a lot of this, you know, with, because I worked at a university for 20 years as a student counselor. So as, as Kidal, as you rightly said, um, many guys go to, for, go to university for the degree and, and as much sex as possible and not necessarily in that order. Right. <laughs> so that's what my female um, colleagues told me. But one of the things I started to ask women in particular, and then men, friends with benefits, and you know, explain that to me, I knew what it was. And I then, a question occurred to me one day and I said to women, are you happy with that? And guess what their response was? No. Hmm. Wow. No. So I said, well, what do you mean? I want something more. So I think there's an expectation, but if you get past the layers, Hmm. they actually want more than, they want commitment, they want security, even at 18, 19 or 20. Delroy, but it's the trap. It's the trap because (laughs) they're telling you, they're telling you no professionally, they're telling you no professionally, but they're agreeing to it personally with the hope that they will rope you in once they have you. Yeah. I think on that, I will beg to differ, only that in the privacy of the room, quite often people are more honest then in the room than they are out with their friends because they, they're in a place, hopefully, which is safe and secure and they can be themselves. So you could be right, you know, you could be right. But I think, now it's interesting, the conversation is about men, and hypersexuality. But then as I'm listening more, I'm thinking, what on earth are women going through? Thank you. (laughs) You know, that's funny that you asked that question, Delroy, because as you were all talking, I kept thinking that I have such similar experiences. (laughs) Well, isn't that the thing? Because I was thinking exactly that. I have my own experience that uh, that I'm having that 
is very similar to what you're describing. And in fact, this whole platform has come about because I have said that this is Cocktails with LA, The Adventures of a Recovering Sex Addict. That is the tagline of my online show. So when I was given the opportunity to, to do late night cocktails, it was an, an amalgamation of what I had already been doing talking about this, but then mixed with the IG Lives where I was able to connect with people and have these kinds of conversations. And I'm seeing how much sex plays into my experience and my, and my, dis, um, my mis-experience with black men. Um, and how many, how many ripples and layers it goes out to. However, when we start to talk together, it becomes the oppression Olympics. You know, I want to give space to what black men are dealing with but I'm going through the exact same thing, but because I'm gendered in a different way than you, it has a different um, expectation, it has a different flavoring, um, but we don't know how to have those conversations together. And, um, and I, I, don't, I don't know how to hold, and I think it happens in our family dynamics as well when we have family feuds and arguments. It's because they don't know how to break down um, putting their their pain on hold in order to hold space for yours and then it be reciprocated. Uh, and I strive for that in this show and, and gender equity is very important. I'm all for women empowerment, but I am strongly for gender equity because I notice that there's a, a voice missing in the dialogue. What does that mean though? What does which part mean? Equity, equity speaks to a percentage. It speaks to an allotment, well, right? What does equity what does gender well, equity I just, mean? I know that people are looking for... Is it 50-50 for, in no, equality? No, it's not a numerical thing. It's, um, so equality is more numerical. I should have the same earnings as a man, and I should do this as a man quantifiably. Um, for me, equity is in understanding. I, I often use this example at, at the University of Toronto where I work for an access program. And if I think about the ramp that leads up to the door to grant people access. If I don't measure the door, then maybe somebody in a wheelchair can't come in. Maybe somebody else. So their equity is about the nuances of, of fairness um, for me. And that's how I show up with it in terms of how I want to interact with people is, can we create an empathy for one another instead of standing in a space of opposites? Is there, is there no claim on outcome? In terms of inequity? I mean, it well, seems to me. Claim means like it, it feels very competitive, and I just feel like there should be a collaboration since we're both being subjugated. So we're both being subjugated, um, but there's different terms because the way that they manipulate men, from my observation, is different to how they've they've done it to me, and it has caused a dissonance in how I can relate to you and how you can then relate to me, and then it goes around in a circle as if to say that there's no way to stop it and start over. But that's not true, there is. We, the imagination, Tamari, is something that you've penned with your book. And um, so from that perspective, there's an imagination, something that we can aspire to in terms of holding space for something that they don't understand. Because it's a learning as well from the people that are now learning with you that this has been happening to you. And then it's almost like an aha of, I've contributed, I've been an agent of that. So people don't, in the same way that you're like, you're just sleeping with the girl and measuring this and you're just doing this because you just are living, you're journeying. I'm journeying watching you. And if you interact with me, I all of a sudden become a part of your journey. But that doesn't mean your, your presence isn't also doing something to me.